Hi everyone. Um, this video is about how to clean and get ready the data that is from the survey that the students are going to take um, or that the people are going to take for the evaluation. So this first slide I'm actually not going to talk about. This is here for if you ever do your own survey on Google Forms and it talks about how to download the survey responses. I'm going to do that for you and I'm going to send you um, essentially an Excel document with the survey. So what I'm going to send you is going to look like this. It's going to have um, the, this, and this is very important if you ever do your own survey, is that you need the people going down the rows. Whoops. So these are individual people going down. And then it needs the items, the actual questions going across the top, all right? So that's how it will be set up. And I'm gonna talk in the next slide about cleaning it because it's got some problems. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is delete the constructs that are not yours. So um, I will try to code them in some way so you'll know which construct is which. Um, but just keep the questions that are for your construct and then keep the demographic information because you may want to compare by something like gender, right? So you might want to compare your data between two things, for example. Um, also, um, any, there's, there may be one or two folks who didn't answer any questions. They got started, but the rest of the row is blank. You want to delete those folks. There's columns that may, um, have numerical data that is written out. You need to change it so it's in numerical form and you need to clean up any numbers that have problems. So I'm going to demonstrate this for you. So here is my um, data, right? You'll see the people are in rows. The questions are going across the top, right? And this is just one construct, but then there's some demographic information. So one thing I do most of the time is I copy the original stuff and I paste it into a new spreadsheet because um, a lot of times I make mistakes. And so then I can go back to the original sheet, which I might call raw data so that I know what I did wrong, right? So now here's the things I was talking about. So maybe there are, see how this person is blank? They started filling things out, but they didn't finish. So I'm going to delete that row, right? I don't need it. And then I'm going to delete this row because they didn't, they were blank as well. So those are, that's one thing I might do to clean up. Now notice here that I asked this question, how many minutes do your students receive science education? Well, I'm gonna need to average across all these minutes, but if it looks like this, Excel will not see it as a number. So I need to change that to a number. 50 to 80 is also not a number that Excel can deal with. So I'm going to change that. I'm just gonna put it right in the middle, right? Um, 40 at the beginning of the year, then, <laughs> then it's integrated with ELA, then 80 plus. You'll have to think about each time what you do here. So um, 80 minutes, et cetera, all right? 50 minutes, this person just wrote the word minutes. That makes it impossible. So that's the first stage of things, is um, going through and just cleaning up empty rows, numbers that need to be uh, proper. Um, so next stage, you want to create, and this is a high recommendation, you want to create short headings to label the top of your columns because you need to know what's going on, and then you need to kind of have a sense of what is in each of those columns. So you don't necessarily have to do this, but in order to crunch your data, I highly recommend it. Um, and one of the reasons is that ultimately having two headers confuses Excel and it makes it very difficult to do anything with your data. So I'm gonna actually insert a row here and create headers. So uh, short headers, that's the date. This is the ID, um, partner, um, I might actually, for now, just delete this column. Let's see, roll, minute, and then 
these are, this is my constructs. These are my Likert scales, right? So in general, this is, these are questions about um, doing an investigation, right? So generate questions or predictions to explore, identify questions, and choose variables to investigate. So these are my three questions to understand how often students are engaging in investigation. So I might just call this investigation one, investigation two, and investigation three. Okay, now I can delete these top two rows. And I've just got some shorthand there at the top. Now remember, if I ever get confused as to what the heck these are, I can go back to my raw data and it's all written out. So that's why I wanna keep that raw data. Okay, and I realize I'm going a little bit fast in terms of the actual Excel moves that I'm making. So um, I'll try to find you a video that, you know, goes slower about kind of like, if you're not as familiar with Excel, right, inserting a row or deleting a row is um, not intuitive. So um, if you are familiar with Excel a little bit, this will work for you. Otherwise, you might need to watch a little bit of an additional video. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to make an average across my construct, right? So this is my investigation construct. So I might call it investigation average. And the way I do it, and this, the instructions for this are in the slide, the very next slide that is in this presentation, is I put the equal sign, and then I start typing average. See how there's the average word pops up? I'm gonna click on that. And then it makes a little parentheses, and all I need to do is select the three items I wanna average, close the parentheses and click enter. And now it has averaged across those three things, right? Now, super cool trick in Excel. Well, hold on, we got it omits formula emits adjacent cells. That's a problem. Um, in order to, uh, a super cool thing you can do is you can click on this little, see the little green box at the bottom of this, this cell here. If I click on it, I can drag it all down to the bottom of the data and it actually replicates that average for everybody, all right? So it creates an average across these three for every uh, person. Another thing I do is I kind of do a spot check, right? Like what's the average of three plus three plus two, 2.66, that that should be correct, right? Like I want to make sure that that is that these averages I'm getting are correct. I might even use a calculator. Just spot check a few of them because I might have entered the formula wrong. And I always want to use logic to check things. Okay, so I've created my Likert. I've, I've shortened my headings. I've created my construct average, all right? Um, and you can see here, there's, there's a slide here in case you need to kind of come back to this, that this is sort of what it needs to look like. And there's also a slide that goes through how to do the average. So again, if you need that to come back to it. So over the next two weeks, once you've kind of cleaned and gotten it ready, you'll play with your data. So we've already talked about labeling your, your columns. What you can do at this point is start trying to create figures. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in the next week's video. But there are also many videos available online for you to do that, uh, figure out how to create figures in Excel. Um, so I will be giving you some of those resources, but I highly encourage you to also look. So for example, and again, this is just going to be an example. I'm not going to talk through it. I'm just going to give you a sense of um, what is possible. Um, is that I could go down to the very bottom and I could put an average down here. Or I want an average across all the people. And it's giving me a div zero because of that. Um, so the average for everyone is 2.6 or 2.7, right? That's the average across everyone. So that's one small thing I can do to kind of understand my data. We will talk more in next week's video about how to start doing 
um, other ways to look at our data. But again, I encourage you to play around and look at videos that are available online.